Nimble Fingers by Anuradha Muralidran Read by Shelley Islam Life is never easy for the poor. They have to work long hours just to get a roof over their heads and one meal a day. If their children are lucky, they go to school. If they are not lucky, they have to work. Krishna, who tells this story, is not lucky. He has to work in a factory making beedies, a kind of Indian cigarette. He is a good worker because his young fingers are small and quick and nimble. I cannot read or write, but I can count, but only up to 1,500, because that is the number of beadies that I need to make in a day. My life is easy to explain. If I wake up early, I can play for about one hour, or until the sun begins to light up the eastern sky. For that one hour, I am free. As free as the birds which sit on the tree outside my home. My home is a hut with a roof of dried leaves. It is very small, but the three of us can just sleep in it. And I go away really early and come back in the nights so only my mother and my little sister are there in the daytime. In the nights it is a bit crowded. When we sleep, my arm is often around little Tangachi, or Amma's thin foot is resting on my leg, but it doesn't matter. The other day I asked Amma, How old am I? She counted on her fingers. Six. Six sounds very small when you think about 1,500 beedies, but Sami, the owner of the factory where I work, always says that I have nimble fingers. That night, when we were having our meal outside our home, I asked Amma, What does nimble fingers mean? It means your fingers are like Weaver Mama's fingers, she said. When your uncle spins his cloth, have you seen how quickly his fingers move, pulling the threads this way and that way? I love to watch Weaver Mama working, and now I am very happy because my fingers are like his. I asked Amma one more question while we drank our rice soup. Why do I have to work with Sami and not with Weaver Mama? This question made Amma unhappy, and when she is unhappy, she hits her head with her open hand. The noise is very loud, and she goes on hitting her head again and again, making a pat, pat, Pat sound. It scares Tangachi and me, and I can see that the small one is ready to cry. I put my fingers, nimble fingers, on Amma's hands to stop her hitting herself. She takes both my hands in her hand and starts crying into them. I can feel warm tears dropping onto my fingers. Here I am, happy that I have Weaver Mama's fingers, and Amma is crying. She looks at the black marks on my hands and the cuts on my finger ends. She kisses my hands and holds me and Tangachi close to her. Amma, I ask again, why can I not work with Weaver Mama? Tangachi is pushing her finger into my back. 
Her eyes are telling me to stop my questions, but I want to know. If I can make one thousand five hundred beads in a day, surely I can help Weaver Mama weave his beautiful cloth. Amma never answered my question that day, but I just went on asking. I asked the same question every night until the next full moon. That night, Tangachi was already asleep. Amma and I were sitting outside, watching fireflies dancing in the moonlight. Amma held me close to her. And said, "Krishna, you have to work all your life with Sami, the bonded labor man. You have to do this to pay back your grandfather's debt. You cannot work for another person, because your grandfather has taken five thousand rupees and sold you to Sami. All your life, you will have to work for him." In the same way as your father did, I look down to the ground, because I do not want Amma to see the tears in my eyes. I am a brave boy, you see. But suddenly, my nimble fingers don't feel so nimble any more.